Just delay everyone, I'm Tenzin Zomba and welcome to Tibet This Week, a weekly feature in English that tells you about this week's news on Tibet, His Holiness the Dalai Lama and Central Tibetan Administration. Let us look at the headlines first. His Holiness the Dalai Lama reaffirms to live a long life. His Holiness the Dalai Lama congratulates Nancy Pelosi on National Democratic Institute's Democracy Award. His Holiness the Dalai Lama congratulates Global Teacher Prize winner Ranjit Singh Visali. China detains and harasses Tibetan women. Si Kyung meets Canadian Shadow Minister of Foreign Affairs. Central Tibetan Administration congratulates Matthew McCarthy on appointment as new Director of Office of Democratic Institutions and Human Rights. Communist United Party States Mission hosts Chinese talk on religious freedom in Tibet. Swiss Parliamentary Group for Tibet meets to discuss future plans. Tibetans join Human Rights Day Peace March in Japan. Representative Tashi Pinzok addresses gratitude webinar. Department of Information and International Relations concludes four commitment talk series. Tibetans celebrate the 31st anniversary of conferment of Nobel Peace Prize on His Holiness the Dalai Lama. On Thursday this week, while addressing the audience during his teaching to mark the 601st anniversary of Jai Tsongkhapa's passing away, His Holiness the Dalai Lama reassured to live a long life. Tangle Pergi Kesah Pergi the Tibetan spiritual leader congratulated U.S. House of Representatives Speaker Nancy Pelosi on winning the National Democratic Institute's Democracy Award in recognition of her groundbreaking leadership as a women political leader and for her staunch defense of democracy and human rights around the globe. The award ceremony was held on 8th December. His Holiness said he deeply admired Pelosi's firm stance on truth and her courageous support for the Tibetan struggle. I really admire your determination, your courage to show your support about uh, Tibetan Harsidi struggle. You visited Tibet and also come here. So I really appreciate you see, you not only sort of sympathy 
friendly feeling, but you you have such courage, you see, to stand firm on truth. So I very much want to express today Nancy Pelosi for being conferred the National Democratic Institute's Democracy Award. His Holiness the Dalai Lama wrote to Ranjit Singh Disali, a primary school teacher in Maharashtra, India, to congratulate him on winning this year's Global Teachers Prize. Lauding Disali's work, His Holiness said, all of Disali's work are examples of compassion in action. According to reports, a Tibetan woman, Tsiringso, was arbitrarily detained on 12 November 2020 by local Chinese officers from her Shining home and was taken to the Trika County Detention Center for illegal WeChat post. Later, she was subjected to a 10-day administrative detention and charged with a monetary fine of 1,000 yuan. She was charged with causing other provocative acts but was never explained what precisely constituted stability-related issues in her WeChat post. In 2017, Tsiring Cho was detained in the interrogation room of the Public Security Bureau of Yushu Prefecture after she advocated for the rights of the local Tibetans to apply for passports in accordance with the law in Yushu Tibetan Autonomous Prefecture. She was brutally beaten up by an officer named Jamka of the Immigration Administrative Division of Yushu Public Security Bureau. Sigyong Dodolov Sangsangye had its first meeting with Conservative Party of Canada leadership under its new leader, Erin O'Toole, last Saturday. Sigyong had an opportunity to brief Honorable Michael Chong, who is the Shadow Minister of Foreign Affairs. Sikyong urged Mr. Chong to support the motion that was passed at the Special Committee on China as it moves up for consideration at the Standing Committee and then House of Commons. Mr. Chong committed to meet Sikyong publicly, whether in opposition or in power. He agreed that the situation faced by Tibetans and Uyghurs is a case of cultural genocide. The meeting was attended by Representative Ngodup Tsiring and Tenzin D. Kangsar, who helped coordinate the meeting. Representative Ngodup Tsiring, Office of Tibet, Washington, D.C., met with Congressman Ben McAdam of Utah on Wednesday this week to bid him farewell and show appreciation for his unwavering support for Tibet. Sigyong Dr. Lobsang Sanke and Speaker of Tibetan Parliament in Exile, Pema Jungne, congratulated Matthew Mikachi, President of International Campaign for Tibet, on being appointed as the new Director of the Office of Democratic Institutions and Human Rights in Warsaw. The permanent mission of the United States of America to the United Nations and other international organizations in Geneva hosted a virtual panel discussion on religious freedom in Tibet, the appointment of Buddhist leaders and the succession of the Dalai Lama last Friday. Along with the host speaker, Ambassador Andrew Bramberg, the U.S. permanent representative to the U.N. and other international organizations in Geneva, the panel had U.S. Special Coordinator for Tibetan Issue and Assistant Secretary of State for Democracy and Human Rights and Labor, Robert A. Destro, U.S. Ambassador at Large for International Religious Freedom, Ambassador Sam Brownbread, Director of Outreach of the International Campaign for Tibet, Tenshu Igato, and President of the Central Tibetan Administration, Dr. Lobsang Sangye, as speakers. The speakers condemned China's interference in the matter of reincarnation of Tibetan Buddhist leaders and highlighted the destruction carried out by the Chinese Communist Party in Tibet, denying Tibetans their basic right to practice religion. I think we have to call out not only uh, their desire to appoint the next Dalai Lama, which is uh, a, an absolute ludicrous charge that a government would put forward, but also the breadth and depth of their human rights abuses and their war on faith. Uh, PRC officials uh, prohibit the display of the portrait of the Dalai Lama within China. Um, authorities routinely detain Tibetans for pos possessing his image. 30 Tibetan Buddhist monks uh, were arrested last year simply for having the picture of the Dalai Lama on their cell phones. The uh, Communist Party repeatedly claims to protect religious freedom, but how can this be when it criminalizes the mere possession of a revered leader's picture? On Monday this week, members of the Swiss Parliamentary Group for Tibet met in Bern on the sidelines of the winter session of Parliament which began. The range of issues was discussed in the meeting, including the much-anticipated Swiss foreign strategy on China.
The parliamentarians assured continued support to Tibetans and to raise voice on the deplorable human rights situation in Tibet. Representative Chime Rigzin and Tile Chuki from Tibet Bureau Geneva, Chamba Samdo Tsring, member of Tibetan parliament in exile from Europe, and the president of the Swiss Tibetan Friendship Association, Thomas Buckley, participated in the meeting. In a peace march jointly organized by SFT Japan, Southern Mongolians, Uyghurs, Hong Kong, and Taiwanese community to commemorate Human Rights Day in Tokyo on Saturday last week, the Tibetan community in Japan, along with other repressed communities, protested against the Chinese government's human rights violation and territorial aggression. Representative Dr. Arya said China's claim of bringing development and paradise in Tibet is mere propaganda as it refuses free access to UN independent missions, foreign diplomats and journalists to ascertain the truth in Tibet. The protesters holding flags and banners marched through Asakusa city, famous for Sensoji temple, raising slogans calling for an end to China's repression and restore freedom and human rights in Tibet, southern Mongolia, East Turkestan and Hong Kong. Belgium-based Shetup Tengeling Buddhist Center organized a webinar gratitude event in Belgium on Wednesday this week. Representative Tashi Pinzog, Office of Tibet Brussels, in his introductory remark reminded the spirit of Tibetan resilience under the great leadership of His Holiness the Dalai Lama. The webinar was chaired by Venerable Sidem Pinzog of the Center and attended by Venerable Tomto Nibuche, Abbot of Namgyal Monastery, Geshe Meto Rinpoche, Geshe Champa Rabde, and Geshe Dawa Sangpo. Department of Information and International Relations, CTA, concludes week-long virtual talk series on the four principal commitments of His Holiness the Great 14th Dalai Lama. The final day of the talk series featured Tomdo Nibuche, the abbot of Namgil Monastery, who delivered the closing remarks, and the secretaries of the Department of Information and International Relations thanked the speakers and the viewers for the successful conclusion of the talk series. The virtual talk series broadcast on Tibet TV's Facebook and YouTube page from 4th December to the 11th saw around 120 speakers speak in 15 different languages on His Holiness the Great 14th Dalai Lama's four principal commitments. Marking the 31st anniversary of the conferment of Nobel Peace Prize on His Holiness the Dalai Lama, the CT8 on Thursday organized a celebration at its headquarters, all the while minding COVID-19 precautions. Heads of the three pillars of the Tibetan democracy, including the Kashak, Tibetan Parliament in Exile and the Tibetan Supreme Justice Commission, heads of the autonomous bodies, members of the Standing Committee of the Parliament, secretaries and additional secretaries of the CTA departments attended the celebration. In keeping with the statewide COVID-19 guideline, the total strength at the gathering was limited to less than 50 attendees, while the rest of the public joined the celebration virtually. That is all for now. See you next week.